Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The final topic in Chapter 6, VO2 Max. As always, we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam, and today you need to be able to describe what VO2 Max is and its role in measuring cardiovascular endurance, and to identify and explain the factors that affect VO2 Max level. It's now widely recognized that our ability to take up and transport oxygen to the working muscles is one of the most important factors for athletic performance. VO2 max, our key term for the lesson, is defined as the volume of oxygen that can be consumed while exercising at a maximum capacity and is measured in milliliters of oxygen consumed per kilogram of body weight per minute. So which physiological factors determine our VO2 max level? Well, our ability to consume oxygen is dependent on a number of systems within the body, including the respiratory system, which is required to take up oxygen from the air via the alveoli, the circulatory system, which transports it to the working muscles by the action of the heart, and the aerobic system, which converts it into usable energy, or ATP. If the efficiency of any one of these systems became affected, our VO2 max level would decline. So someone with a high VO2 max level is able to consume large quantities of oxygen during exercise. As a result, lots of energy or ATP can be produced, enabling them to work for long periods of time and at higher intensities. This means that VO2 max is an excellent measure of cardiovascular endurance or stamina, and is typically high in endurance athletes such as marathon runners, cyclists, triathletes, and games players. The most accurate way of assessing VO2 max is done in a laboratory using a treadmill or cycle ergometer and several pieces of expensive equipment that just aren't available to most of us. Fortunately, we can use other tests that provide us with an estimate of VO2 max, including the 12-minute Cooper run and the multi-stage fitness test, which you can take a look at in greater detail by clicking on the banner. So what if your test results showed room for improvement? How would you go about increasing your VO2 max level? Put simply, you'd need to select a training method that stresses the systems responsible for the uptake, transportation, and utilization of oxygen. In other words, your respiratory, cardiovascular, and aerobic energy systems. This means continuous training, where you exercise for a minimum of 20 minutes without rest periods, maintaining a heart rate between around 65 and 85% of your maximum. Our second learning objective requires you to explain the factors that affect your VO2 max level, and there are five you need to know. Number one, poor lifestyle choices such as smoking, alcohol consumption, or living a sedentary or inactive lifestyle all have a negative impact on VO2 max. Smoking actually reduces the amount of oxygen that can be taken up by the hemoglobin in our red blood cells, limiting our ability to transport oxygen throughout the body. Number two is age, and unsurprisingly, VO2 max level tends to decline as we get older. It's usually highest in 18 to 25 year olds, and declines at a rate of around 1% per year after that. Number three is gender, and men are typically able to consume more oxygen than women. This is due to a number of factors, including differences in muscle mass and stroke volume. The larger stroke volume in males means that more blood can be transported around the body every time the heart contracts increasing the delivery of oxygen to the body's tissues. Our fourth factor is genetics, and some people naturally inherit a greater VO2 max from their parents. Genetic factors that influence your oxygen uptake include the makeup of your muscle fibers, that is, whether you have a larger proportion of fast or slow twitch fibers, and the size of your heart, which determines the rate at which you can transport oxygen via the blood. Finally, we have training, which we've already briefly referred to. By regularly engaging in cardiovascular activities such as running, cycling, or swimming, we increase the efficiency of our circulatory, respiratory, and muscular systems, allowing the body to take up, transport, and use more oxygen than before. Now you've just covered everything you need to know on topic 6.6, .6, VO2 max. You can find a link to the Cambridge Pass paper database down in the description, so why not go and look for some questions on the topic and practice applying what you've learned. In our next lesson, we'll move on to chapter seven, starting with topic one on the principles of training. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.